G'day everyone, welcome to our preparation trip for Shark Bay. So what you're looking at here is basically all our fishing and boating gear, apart from a few odds and ends like the gaff, the landing net, the oars. In the black bag here is the boating gear we need, includes flares, safety gear, extra bungs, extra spark plugs, all the bits and pieces that you might need for the boat itself. We have a bucket, we can use that for cleaning when we're on the beach or we may decide to use it in the boat to, for keeping fish. We have some reef boots in there, some floats, we have only two crab pots this time. We're not really going after crabs in a big way but just in case we find some there, nice to have a couple of pots just to pop down while you're fishing. We've got some light rods there, the fishing box itself, the box for the fishing gear, the main blue box carries most of our gear. We have a little box there that carries all our hooks and weights and lures and whatnot. That goes on the boat with us each time we go out. So not a huge amount of fishing gear to take. In fact if I look at that and then I look at the camera gear I'm taking, we're probably taking way more in terms of camera gear than we are in fishing gear. So uh, <laughs> we'll see how that one turns out in the end. What I'm starting off with is to have a look at the fishing gear we've got and the sort of stuff we're taking with us. Now we are reasonably experienced at fishing. I'm not a beach fisherman. I like to fish from a boat. This time it's going to be a small eight foot dinghy which is pretty tiny. In fact I don't think we've ever taken such a small boat away before. So I'm just going to go through quickly the fishing gear and then we'll get into a little trip we did locally to pick up some bait. And after that I'll show you what we do to prepare the bait and keep it fresh so that when we get up there we've got some good bait to start off with before we actually start to catch some bait which is what we almost always do when we're out fishing. Now where do we start? The fishing box we've got is an El Cheapo from Kmart. They sell these things in two versions. One's expensive, one's cheap. We bought the cheap unbranded version. What it has is a series of trays. Four trays in all. They slide in and then the front comes up and clips on. So you can carry a fair bit of gear with it. It's not a huge box, but we generally find that we can carry all we need for a trip. The days are gone when we went up north for a long period. This is only going to be a couple of weeks at most. One of the things we're making sure of is that we've got up-to-date reels, that we're not taking old gear. We tend to be a bit rough on our gear. Uh, so what we've done, we bought a couple of light reels. And we've also bought a couple of heavier reels. Haven't even spooled these up yet. We usually use mono, but a lot of people are using braid these days and other things. So we're going to spool one of these up with some braid line. So initially we'll put a bit of mono backing on there and then we'll spool the braid on top of that. What we've got for the heavier reels is a couple of Rovex Endurance 8000. They feel rather nice. We haven't actually tried Rovex before. They're very smooth. The bearings in them feel very nice. And we'll also be taking an older reel that we do know that we've been using for a long time, just in case one of these gives up. As we won't have the chance to use these in Perth, we tend not to fish for bigger fish down here because we don't have a big enough boat to get out to where they live. So, basic look at the gear, plenty of spare mono line, some braid. We keep our lures in these plastic bags, stops them getting all tangled up. Some jigs, some poppers, some soft plastics. Uh, we've got some worms there, another squid jig, and a couple of smaller lures, uh, hopefully for whiting or something like that. I tend to be a bait fisherman rather than a lure fisherman. 
I once heard someone say that lures catch more people than they catch fish. But I do watch the fishing shows on YouTube and I've seen plenty of people catch with lures so uh, always have a few in the bag just in case. Okay so the sort of gear we take is a selection of clips and swivels a few soft plastics there for bait fish we also make our own traces up so we've got a few crimps so we can make the traces to whatever length we like a few small weights some very tiny hooks there in case there's some bait fish around that we want to have a go at have a spare rod tip in there too which I haven't just noticed In the top of the box there's our wire trace that we use, some crimpers, there's a few floats in there, a D hooker, not much else in the top. We take a good assortment of hooks, we've got plenty of gang hooks, we've got hooks that can be turned into gangs, a number of chemically sharpened hooks, so that's our big hook box apart from just some long shanks there we always take way more hooks than we need second box full of hooks so you can see we're not going to run out of hooks in any time soon and some weights now I don't have this box finished yet we're going to put another bunch of weights in the top there some heavier ones I doubt we're going to get out to very deep water, but uh, just in case, we'll have a few heavyweights and depending on the tides. We've got some clip-ons and sliders here so that you can put weights on to your line and take them off without too much trouble. A couple of cheapy knives. They're actually quite a lot sharper than our good knives at the moment, so we'll have to sharpen up the good knives. I don't buy very expensive knives because uh, they tend to get treated pretty roughly. Nice little soft fillet knife so that it bends easily if you're getting around bones and that sort of thing. And another one here. I'd love to be able to go out and buy some German or Japanese steel blades but uh, they tend to be a bit expensive for me. Yeah. So I've got a basic sharpener that we use when we're out in the boat if the knives need a bit of a touch-up. We find these scalers are pretty good. I have tried, I've tried a number of different types of scalers over the years, but these ones I find are, are very good for all sorts of fish, even for light scaled fish like whiting, all the way up to the bigger fish, mulloway, that sort of thing. We've got a couple of sets of gloves that we take with us just in case we've got any particularly unpleasant fish to handle. Now let's have a look at some of the older stuff in the fishing box. Okay, here we have a very old alvey reel. Now I've made use of this a lot on our fishing trips and this has caught a lot of fish. Very heavy mono line on it. It's about 80 pounds I think that one. It needs a bit of a clean up and some tender loving care. It's an absolutely excellent reel. It's a real shame Alvey didn't continue to make their reels this quality. Unfortunately, their newer reels are nothing like this. But, uh, yes, I'm definitely going to clean that up and get it ready to go. We pair that with a solid glass rod, a short boat rod. And there's not much that won't pull up. Okay, we have a couple of spare reels just in case something goes wrong. Light one and a heavy. We've had both of those for quite some time. They've been very reliable. We've caught a lot of fish on them. So they'll go along as a spare. We carry bait boxes. They're great for when you're fishing on the beach and when you want to pick up some bait like guardies or whiting or something like that. We have a live bait keeper that just straps onto the belt of the box and we keep that dangling in the water so that any fish we catch we can keep them alive and 
depending on what we catch sometimes we'll let them go if we don't catch enough so it's a, an opportunity there not to kill the fish if we don't have to and we'll just take the ones we want at the end that way you can pick and choose the fish that you want you don't have to take everything these little bait boxes are very useful we use them all the time when we go fishing from the beach for bait I very rarely fish from the beach to catch anything to eat but we almost fish from the beach to catch bait okay we have a measurer to check that the fish are legal nice little fl flick out ruler we also carry some stickers on the boat in case the fish are bigger than that and uh, yes we have caught fish bigger than that some crab measurers because we will be targeting some blue swimmers there are generally some blue swimmers in shark bay somewhere so uh, we'll be seeing if we can find a few of those while we're there we also take along our fish oil and some cans of tuna based cat food now that's excellent for making up burley what we do we mix this with flour and put some oil in it knead it until you get a nice plasticine mixture and you can then use that either for catching guardies on a hook or you just put it in your burley bucket and it'll last for hours and hours and slowly releases the smell into the water so that's basically the fishing box packed it doubles as a cooler of course and uh, we can use it as a tank on the boat although I'm not entirely sure yet whether we will be taking this out on the small boat but uh, we'll see how we go the first couple of days and uh, we'll find out whether this is suitable for use or whether it's a little bit too big for our little tiny bathtub of a boat okay on to our little fishing trip we went out uh, locally in Rockingham to catch some bait fish knock the fillets off and get those prepared and ready to take up What we got here is a little Shakespeare reel. It came with a rod and reel kit from Audi for about $30. Pretty good value. We've had Shakespeare gear before and they've been quite good. One thing I don't like about this is the handle. You can see the position it's in there. It moves in. Now I've got this pretty tight. There's an adjuster on this side and that's about as tight as I can get it. But this handle will shift in from that position when you're winding. As you can see there I've just manually moved it in and that will connect with the spool and it will hit your fingers and that sort of stuff as you're winding. So that's a bit of a problem, uh, I'll have a bit of a look at it when I get home and uh, take it off the rod and see if there's any other way of adjusting it but it's a bit of an irritation at the moment. We've got two of these rods, the other one doesn't seem to be doing it so whether this one's got a fault or not I can't say but I'll have a good look at both of them, switch the handles around and see if there's any more adjustment to be had on this side of it here. It's only light gear, we're just using this to catch whiting and small fish. We're going to take spare rods with us of course, 
when you're going on a long trip and far away from home you always want to take spare gear because you never know when something big is going to grab hold of your small line and break it. You can easily break these reels or snap the rods. We've had that happen in the past so if we take a couple of heavy rods each and a couple of light rods each it should be okay. Now a great way to prepare your bait and your food as well is with a vacuum sealer. It really helps keep it fresher longer and it means you don't have to keep everything in the freezer. This food will last for a long time once it's been vacuum sealed. Now we are going to freeze this fish anyway but we like to vacuum seal it just for extra freshness and to keep it in the best condition possible. You don't have to go and buy these things new. We're seeing quite a lot of these in the op shops. Now we're great fans of the op shops around the place. And we got this for $11. Now the cheapest we've seen these things new is about $60 in Audi or super cheap. So for 11 bucks, I reckon this is pretty good value for money. First thing you need to do is seal your bag up. You can buy these in rolls or you can buy them ready made up. We like to buy them in rolls because they're much better value. These are two 6 meter rolls from Kmart for about $12 I think it was. So good value and you can make your own size bags then. You're not limited to the size bags that are provided. So the first thing we do is lock that down. Put the sealer on. Now some of these, there's a couple of different types of machines. Some will seal or vacuum and some will seal and vacuum at the same time. There's that and you can now see that's heat sealed at the end of that bag. So we get our fillets, pop those in. Push a little bit further down into the bag. for the red light to go off. And there we have our vacuum sealed fish. Now you could keep that in the fridge for quite a long time but we've still got about six weeks before we're going to go so we're going to pop that in the freezer. We're going to have about three or four of these available to us. We're also taking up some prawns and some squid. So a variety of baits is useful when you go fishing. You never know what the fish are going to bite on. So this is a very good way to store your food. A little bit of liquid in the top, we'll just wash all that out so it's all nice and clean. You've still got a bit of a section there, that needs a bit of a wash out. And we'll pop it in the freezer and that'll be ready for us to go when we're up at Shark Bay.